Hi everybody, I hope you've had a good Christmas and good New Year. It's 2017 and I'm back again with more complete brain cancer inducing shit just to start it all off in the proper fashion. This is Lars Lindström, he likes to call himself a journalist and works at the Swedish newspaper Expressen. I've talked about these asshats before, it's the same people who wrote a piece about how uneducated analphabets from North Africa and the Middle East would save Sweden's economy. Yeah, that paper. So now I'm going to read a new text written by another one of Expressen's intellectual heavyweights about the now far too frequent plowing down of innocent people all over Europe being done by Muslim terrorists using trucks. Okay, this is going to be very interesting to read. We shouldn't hunt and punish the innocent. Every year tens of thousands of innocent people all over Europe die in a horrible way. No, not in terror attacks, I'm talking about traffic accidents. People are strolling as usual down Promenade Anglais in Nice. It's full of French people and tourists in the unusually warm winter sun in the Riviera. Nothing suggests that 86 people died just this summer. No fear can be discerned. And I'm already mad. New record. No fear? How the fuck would you know anything about the fear of people living in Europe who have been the victims of terror attacks, Mr. Lindstrom? I can count on one hand the amount of terror attacks that have been taking place in this country. In the 70s we had the Red Army faction holding up the West German embassy in Stockholm. Two people were shot and then one of the attackers accidentally set off a grenade and killed himself. And the 11th of December 2010 some Islamists set off two bombs in central Stockholm, killing himself and giving two Swedes minor injuries. That is it. That is all. Well, we also had fatwas aimed at Swede Lars Vilks because Salafist human trash got butt hurt because he drew a terrible drawing of a dog with Muhammad's head. But in the grand scheme of things, we've experienced nothing. You and I know jack shit about the fears of people in France, or Germany for that matter, or in any other of the many countries suffering from attacks being done by Muslim terrorists. We are complete fucking tourists on the topic, and your attitude is proof of this. Not even four military policemen with grim faces and loaded automatic weapons change anything. They walk slowly, transformed into squares with a distance of six or... S Who gives a shit? Are, are you still talking about people in France at the precise moment you happen to wander by while taking notes in your faggy little leather-bound notepad, not looking like they were afraid? Not feeling uneasy about the fact that heavily armed police walking around is now normal in large parts of the EU? Well, I expect that your sheltered and cushioned perception of reality would be badly broken if you actually took the time to speak to them instead of simply thoughtfully biting the tip of your pencil while enjoying a cup of coffee at some picturesque and charming French cafe. You get used quickly to new control mechanisms, new emergencies. We're people, we know that terrorism must be prevented in combatants, we want the terrorists to be hunted and punished, and we understand that the preachers of violence must not prevail. Personally, I think that the defending of a violent religious and political ideology by meek men who consider self-preservation to be an act of intolerance to be worthy of punishment as well. Pathetic excuses of liberals and other progressives on a more or less daily basis defend rapists, terrorists and other scum, so pardon my difficulty in swallowing your overwhelming amount of hypocrisy. But we cannot hunt down and punish the innocent. We shouldn't be afraid of fellow human beings who are without blame. Each individual must be judged by their actions. Oh my god, what a complete and utter platitude. Cheap comments which spare you from any serious investment whatsoever. Okay, Lady Justice, when would you consider a person to not be innocent? Should a supporter of Sharia be considered innocent? A person who doesn't respect the law of the land? <laughs> Is an ISIS supporter who wants Europe to be gobbled up by the caliphate innocent? I don't know if you've seen the numbers regarding support for political violence among Muslims in, for instance, the UK, but also in Sweden. It's pretty terrifying to read. And apparently the younger generation is even worse than their parents, a fact which stands in stark contrast to the claim you often hear about fundamentalism and violent views within Islam dying away in the West. So is a person who supports violence against innocent people in the name of their religion really innocent? Well, of course he is. It's completely legal to be a retard, which is obvious since you, Mr. Lindstrom, still haven't been put in jail. So these supporters of murderers are indeed innocent until they're not. Right? You are not allowed to call for the slaughtering of a specific group of people while standing in the middle of a town square, but it's legal for you to support suicide bombings against Israeli civilians while you're just checking boxes in a survey. That's harmless, isn't it, Mr. Lindstrom? So the general plan from your ilk, so far, is to wait until people die, then change your profile picture on Facebook in solidarity and explain it away all as just being a lone psychopath while also dodging the fact that these murderers are often praised as martyrs in the very area where they grew up. 
I would argue that your simplistic view unintentionally or willfully misses the greater picture, which is the fact that Sweden is a breeding ground for terrorism and that it needs addressing. And the part that is extremely irritating is that you know that this is true, the information is very easy to get a hold of, so I think it's outright disgusting how you preach about the importance of being innocent until proven guilty when the victims of your gullibility are being torn to ribbons by bombs or crushed by trucks in other countries. Countries where attacks have been planned and aided by people who you would call innocent until proven guilty. But I'm sure European victims of terrorism are extremely impressed by how faithful you are towards your moral principles. I come to think of a news heading of the terrorist attacks this Christmas. Truck drove into the crowd in Berlin. It made a Facebook user ironically exclaim, Should I be afraid of trucks now? To which it can be argued that trucks were used at the attack in Berlin and in the one at Nice. So yes, watch out for runaway trucks at National Day celebrations, on Christmas markets, and in the traffic. Okay, just a quick question. Are you paid by the letter? or by the amount of snide and sensitive remarks you can cram into your texts, or are you just being a cunt for free? In one year, more than 26,000 EU citizens die in traffic accidents. In 2015, exactly 26,112,000, according to Eurostat. Sadly, there was an increase, but it still has been gradually a welcome reduction, and even more gratifying is that Sweden is second in Europe regarding traffic safety. How is this even remotely relevant to anything at all? The terrorist attacks in 2015 took about 180 lives in the EU, and the figure for 2016 may be slightly lower. Citation needed. Also, I really hope you're not going where I think you're going with this. The last two years has hit Europe particularly hard, yet we are far from the death rates caused by terrorism here in the 1970s and the 1980s, according to the Global Terrorism Database, and just a few percent of terrorism deaths are actually found in Western countries. And you did it. You fucking went there. That's unbelievable. Okay, so not enough people have lost their lives in order for us to have any real need to worry then. Because there died more people in the EU during the 1970s and 80s. Well, bravo, case closed. And look, you also put your degree in journalism to some use by providing us with a single source, so let's look at that then. Fuck's sake. So from 1970 all the way up until 2005, there were only 1,037 people who died as the result of terrorism in all of Europe. This means that 1,037 lives were lost during the span of 35 years. I hope you're aware, Mr. Lindstrom, that about 3,000 people died in a single day in the US on the 11th of September 2001. You know about that, right? It rings a bell. But perhaps that was different. Something like that could never happen in Europe. But since you're dazzling me with all these facts and the numbers and all that shit, I'm going to raise you one and serve up an interesting thought based upon facts, which might be worth, you know, thinking about. In total so far, about 135 people, according to our Swedish security police, have returned to Sweden after having fought together with ISIS. The number can be a little bit higher or a little bit lower. I think it's higher. Now, our iconic arena, Globen in Stockholm, has room for 16,000 audience members. The building only has six exits. How different do you think our number of murdered Europeans would look in 2017 if even just two out of these 135 terrorists living in our country were to come in through two of these six exits with guns? And also, would you still be doing your best to downplay the number? Of course you wouldn't, because you wouldn't dare. Because grieving families all over Sweden would then want you to be swinging from the highest tree. But still, you seem to think it's okay to downplay the loss of other countries in the EU because there hasn't died as many people there. Yet, as it did in the 1970s and 80s. Am I following your argument? Every single one of the 180 dead in the terrorist attacks, every single one of the 26,000 deaths in the EU traffic is a tragedy, a family suffering, a sorrow that will need to be processed. Again with this, why do you keep going on about casualties and traffic? That's like saying, well, this terrorist massacre that just took place was horrible, but you know what also is horrible? The amount of people who die from lung cancer each year because of smoking. What the fuck are you talking about? More than a hundred times more people die in traffic than from terrorism in the EU, but no one thinks of hating and persecuting all drivers because of it. Are you retarded? What you have written here is completely dripping with a level of stupidity that you'd only ever expect from a person who considers operating a door handle to be an insurmountable intellectual challenge. Are you seriously implying that people give drivers who intentionally murder people using their vehicles a pass in our society? What you just wrote is so extremely stupid 
that I'm just checking to see if I'm really understanding you correctly. Because trying to follow along with your reasoning is like attempting to braille read roadkill. Mr. Lindström, are you perhaps familiar with the term accident? Look, I found the definition for you right here. Accident, an unforeseen and unplanned event or circumstance. You see, when you swerve off the road because a deer jumped in front of your car, and you as a result crashed down a hill and died, that was an accident. It was also an accident that you hit a young woman who was walking in the dark on the other side of the road. That was a series of unintended tragic events. Planning and shooting up a concert hall full of people or losing control over your car and by accident hurting yourself and others isn't even remotely similar to each other. What the hell are you talking about? I have no idea how you can be receiving a paycheck at the end of each month, Mr. Lindström. You're clearly unable to even differentiate between something as basic as accident and intent. The man who is paying you and running the paper through which you continuously publish your fecal discharge, he must be even more mentally aborted than you are. Oh look, he actually is. Stop defending terrorism through your strained, idiotic and frankly offensive mental gymnastics and instead demand that Muslims take to the street in protest and start taking a more active part in even making an attempt at cleaning up their violent and oppressive religion, if that is in practice even possible. Can't you people at your ass-rag newspaper ever get anything right? To you, the listener, I hope you've enjoyed another rant aimed at one of the far too many excuses for journalists we have the misfortune to be housing in Sweden. Take care of yourself, and I'll talk to you very soon. Ugh, I need a beer.